To open source intelligence researchers, Twitter is a giant, rich database full of information we can use. Today, we'll take a look at a tool called Twint that allows you to make use of this vast sea of information on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. For an OSINT investigator, services like Twitter are just a giant searchable database that's constantly being updated by various users. Now, it might be a little stuffy to look at social media and just think, hey, this is something for me to share, because in actual fact, you can derive a lot of information from what people do choose to share on these services. Librarians, researchers, people who investigate crimes all know that Twitter is one of the best resources for finding out what's going on. And in general, you can count on not only text, but media being shared that allows you to get a ground level understanding of what's happening. Now this could include an internal understanding of what a building looks like via some video that's been shared. It could include internal photos that have multiple staff members. But in general, you can expect to find a bounty of information on services like Twitter. Now the problem, as with other sources of information, is scale. There's so much information that it's difficult not to get lost in the weeds. So it's fortunate that there's tools like Twint to be able to cut through all that data and learn exactly what you need to learn. Now typically, you also need to either be logged in or be using an API key in order to do these kinds of searches. And this is where Twint is really special, because not only does it allow you to be really specific, such as getting only things from a certain geolocation on a certain date, it can also allow you to do all of this without needing to log in or use that API key, so you can do it anonymously and without limits. In order to use Twint, you need to have Python, but that's a pretty easy requirement to have. So as soon as you have Python installed, you can do it on any Linux system because it's pretty easy to use. If you want to go ahead and take a look at the more detailed requirements, you can check out the Nullbyte article, which is linked in the description, because it has a more detailed list there. Once you're ready, we can begin. In order to get started using Twint, we'll first need to go to the GitHub repository. Once we're there, we can learn more information about the project and why it's unique and a little bit different from some other OSINT tools. Now, something that comes up a lot is that you need to use APIs in order to usually get this kind of data. And it limits to 3,200 tweets, which means there's some limitations as well with how anonymous you can be, because you do need to be signed into a Twitter profile in order to get an API key in the first place. Now, Twint is special because it doesn't have rate limitations and it can be used anonymously because it doesn't use an API. So this is a really cool and interesting feature of the project that I was really drawn to and enjoyed. Now, as a researcher, I really enjoy the kind of, per, um, I guess, philosophy that Twitter is just this giant database that we can kind of parse however we want, because it's really tied to the environment and lots of people are always adding different types of media. So if we scroll down and look at some of the options here, we can see a little bit more about what we can pull, and some of it is really exciting. We can do things like actually pull uh, specific users' tweets from verified users. We can get geolocation tweets without having a user in mind at all. And we can do historic tweets in order to verify that maybe something happened before a certain date or after. Uh, it's really pretty exciting what we can find. So I like the options that this uh, particular search tool provides because it makes Twitter that much more accessible for someone with a research point of view and maybe isn't as interested in Twitter as a social platform. So to learn about what's going on in the world, let's first go ahead and clone the GitHub repository, which we can get right here. And you can generally follow the instructions for the development version because this easy install just didn't quite work for me. So first you'll need to take this link right here and copy the command into a terminal window, which will, in my case, fail. But in your case, download everything you need into a new destination. So I can see that this has successfully downloaded. So I'll type CD and twint. And then when I type LS, I can see the requirements.txt, which is a really helpful file that some Python developers will put in, which allows them to basically load everything that their program needs to run. So if we type cat requirements.txt, if you've ever wondered what this is, it's just a nice way to say, hey, all of these libraries are going to be used in my package. Please run them uh, and install them before you run this tool. So the next step is pip3 install tack r requirements.txt. And I'm going to go ahead and run it, even though I've installed these. That's annoying. Uh, but 
you're not gonna see anything because I've already I've already done this. But for you, this should take maybe three or four minutes to install all the various libraries and dependencies. Uh, and it looks like it's actually trying to download one, which is funny because I've been running this all day and it hasn't uh, hasn't done this. But either way, once you have all the libraries that you need to run this program, you should be able to run it just by typing twint into a terminal window. You don't need to go in and run this program yourself. Uh, you can do that if there's some problem and you can't run it directly from the command line terminal. You'll just need to type Python and then uh, twint.py. Um, uh, but that's probably not necessary. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and let's type twint tac tac help. So twint has a lot of really interesting flags we can set. And I'm not going to go into all of them, but you can start to use your imagination when you also think of this as a Python library you can use for scripting. So here you can see that videos and images are definitely on the menu. So pulling media out of these tweets is also a big helpful uh, kind of thing that we can do if we want to maybe see inside of a building or understand who is at an event or maybe get some more contextual information about somewhere we can't physically go ourselves. So a perfect example is also the geolocation ability, which allows us to take a just general uh, geolocation address and parse it into tweets that have been posted there by users who are sharing their location with their tweets, which in some cases is, is enabled by default. So first, let's do something really basic. We're going to do a user search. And rather than just pick something totally random, let's do one that I know will probably get a lot of results. So in this case, I'm going to pick a uh, the real Donald Trump as the uh, person that we're actually going to follow up with, with the search term loser. Now you need to actually provide quotes around this because if you don't, it'll, if there's more than one word, interpret it incorrectly and think it's another string and fail. So make sure to add quotes around whatever search term you're looking for. And while I am going to look at this on the terminal window, it's going to be a lot of information. So I'm going to save this to a file called uh, Trump one text. So let's go ahead and output this and see if we get any results from following the user real Donald Trump searching loser. And then hopefully we also get a file where we can look all through all this and maybe search for some more interesting bits. Now you can see there are a lot of results, which is perhaps not so surprising. But after these finish loading, then we should have a view of every single time this particular user has mentioned this word and we can start to kind of dig through it from there and get a little bit more specific. Now, let's say that we want to learn, I guess, about a uh, an address instead. So I picked a place called the Fish Shack, and what I wanted to do is see if I could just take the geolocation, which is a place on Field and Jefferson in South Central Los Angeles, and just by taking this geolocation, find people who are actually tweeting about this business, which is relatively close by. So in order to search for maybe people talking about something in real life, maybe people in a company who are discussing something internal like an event or something like that that would be helpful for an outsider to learn, we can type sudo twint tac g for geolocation and then within quotes, we put the longitude, the latitude, and then the radius that we want to search in. In this uh, particular instance, I put two kilometers, but you can go ahead and put whatever you think will encompass the space that you need. Now, I'm also going to uh, search for Fish Shack, which is the, is the name of the business that we're trying to find, but I'm also going to add some extra parameters, which is part of what makes Twins so interesting. So I'm going to search for things that mention email and phone because it gives the likelihood that we might be able to scrape some email addresses or phone numbers that people are posting publicly or tweeting to each other in a conversation. So a lot of people sometimes won't private message each other. They'll just hit each other up with private details. And although this isn't super common, people that don't, aren't aware of search tools like this might not know that they can be dug up so easily. So when we run the search, we can go ahead and see that hopefully we'll find some stuff that might give us some information about Fish Shack. Maybe, uh, I guess not Fish Shack specifically, but maybe in this general area. We can see some tweets that would be inclusive of uh, personal details. There we go. So uh, we can see people mentioning their phones, trying to get their email, shoot them an email. Um, these are all different references that make it more likely for us to find a tweet that involves someone exchanging personal information, which makes digging through a large mass of tweets, maybe from a particular area where a company's headquarters are, a lot easier to dig for this sort of personal stuff. 
Now there's other sorts of things we could search for, including media or that sort of stuff, but it doesn't really matter because uh, there's tons of information out there. There will always be more stuff to find. What's really important is being able to organize it in a way that makes sense. So let's first take a look and make sure that our previous, yep, uh, previous example worked. We can type cat trumped1.txt. And here we can see all the tweets that we managed to scrape before from that account. So not only were we able to scrape it and print it to the terminal, we were also able to save it for later analysis. And in fact, if we want to do it one better, we can even format this in an, uh, I guess, an even more understandable way of interpreting data. Maybe something that could be passed through something more automated. So first I'll increase the radius in our previous search. And then I'm going to save an output file, tac o of let's say csv.csv. Not very creative, but that's okay. And then we'll add the flag csv. So what we're saying is we want to save the data instead as a CSV file. So it can be easily parsed, maybe studied for patterns or otherwise understood by more automated software that's going to go through and look for information about maybe email addresses. So this could be a regex searcher or something else that will skip all of this other metadata and focus in on one particular field and be able to parse the data that we've captured a little bit better than just looking through it with our human eyes. So if I type ls, we should now have a CSV file. Yep, csv.csv. And we can type cat csv.csv. And here we have all of our comma separated value information, all nice and ready to be parsed by some other program. So this is really cool. And basically you can see how at this point we can use Twitter as our own personal repository of information that we can pull without any sort of API restrictions or limitations on what we can pull at a particular time. That's why Twent is so useful, because if you're looking for maybe on the ground information about a place you could never physically go, you can not only limit the time that you're pulling from, but also the geolocation so that you don't even maybe know the users that you're going after when you begin your search. Because Twint is also available as a Python library, it's also possible to script together some really useful things. An example might be targeting an organization and then mining through their tweets for email addresses and phone numbers in order to maybe intercept some private communication or other information that could help with an OSINT investigation. Twitter is by far one of the most updated databases out there because users are constantly updating it. So for any OSINT investigator, you should check out Twint because it allows you to make sense of all this data. If you want to check out more, you can take a look at the Nullbyte article I wrote, which is linked in the description. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts on future episodes or comments, you can hit me up on Twitter because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.